Hello, hello everyone. This is Scott, and today I'm joined by... Abby. Abby. Hey, Abby, what's going on? Hi, hi. So, what do we uh, have here today to show our lovely audience? All right, so apparently what we've got today is a blue-green... Whoa, 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 yeah. I mean, the deck is great, yeah, we'll get to that. Yeah. But I mean, what are we doing here? We are... what we are doing is uh, budget standard. Yeah, like building and brewing on a budget. Yes. That's important because we're trying to make decks that are good with spending a minimal amount of money. Mm -hmm. Because if you're like Abby and me, you've probably already spent a ton of money on paper magic. You've invested lots of time, your hard-earned money, yep. and then you play magic online and you're like, oh, this is great. This is cool. I can play at two in the morning against people in Singapore. This is awesome. Yeah. But you don't want to spend, you know, another God knows how much money on your online account as you've done in real life already. Mm -hmm. So that's what we're going to try and help you and come up with some fun decks that we can make for cheap. Yes. So unlike some other budget uh, deck building and brewing sessions, our goal here is to build decks that use cards that aren't used in many other decks. Usually that means they're one ticket or less each. So one mm -hmm. ticket is basically our limit for yes. cards. And then putting all of the deck together, about $10 or 10 tickets is our limit. No more, no less. Uh, less is fine because of the budget. Oh yeah, less. So, <laughs> yeah, and obviously the prices in real life and online are different sometimes, but we'll mostly be going by online or sometimes we'll be going by real life if it's significantly cheaper. Anyway, again, different from some other sections, we're not going to be using, you know, budget as in the $50 Mythics instead of the five hundred, the set of the $500 Mythics, because that's what's considered budget sometimes these days. Rather, what we're going to do is we're going to be using cards that don't really have a home yet. Cards that, you know... Just kind of lost. Yeah, they're kind of lost. They fall down in the cracks. Poor lost boys. They... Oh. They're powerful, but nobody's really paid attention to them yet. And that's one of the keys to budget decks, I think. And we'll be getting into budget theories and such later. Because it's kind of annoying when you see other budget decks that run, you know, the good mythics, like Jaces and Swords and everything. And yeah, they're original, but they're kind of the same thing. And if you already have those cards, why not build a good deck? So what we're going to do is we're going to look at some of the less loved cards in Magic, and we're going to build stuff out of them. So we'll talk about some more details later. Right now, let's get into the deck. Abby? Yes? What do you think about this deck? I think it's pretty interesting. Um, although I'm kind of uh, kind of puzzled why Shared Discovery is in there. Shared Discovery. Ah. Oh. Again, I was just talking about we're going to look at some cards that are, you know, they're powerful, but they've kind of slipped under the radar. So, Shared Discovery. You remember this card from our favorite Rise of Eldrazi drafting? Yeah, yeah. It's when I first learned how to play Magic. Yes, Shared Discovery. So, often you'd get it, you know, 13th, 14th pick, if you were lucky sometimes. If you're lucky. Yeah, sometimes you would get a, uh, you'd get it over a basic land. Yeah, it's pretty bad in draft, because it requires a lot of creatures out, but it also requires you to not really value those creatures, because you're going to tap them to draw cards. But, in a deck like like we have here, which is basically a blue-green overrun sort of deck, mm -hmm. which is based on just getting a lot of spawn out using Nest Invaders and Kozlex Predator. Kozlex Predator, oh my god, what doesn't this card do? It's pretty good. Yeah, it's amazing. And it uses those to basically turn your shared discoveries into Ancestral Recalls. Mm. Have you ever heard of the card Ancestral Recall, Abby? Um... Actually, I haven't. Can you tell me about it, please? Are you serious? Yeah. Okay. You know the Power 9, Black Lotus, the Moxes? Yes. Yeah, it's one of them. Oh, okay. It's awesome. Pay one blue, draw three cards. Yeah. So that basically, this turns into Ancestral Recall in this deck, which, Damn. as Abby now knows, is a pretty powerful card. Mm -hmm. You know, illegal in every format except Vintage. <laughs> you know it must be good if it's only legal in Vintage. I've heard tell as such. Anyway, so Shared Discovery kind of the key to the deck, but we only have three here because in multiples it kind of sucks because then you really lose out on the tempo, but just once or twice, and oof, it's beautiful. And anyway, getting to some other parts of the deck, here we have the mana base. You'll notice we have 
no Misty Rainforest, because those are, what, like five tickets? And who, need, much? Pff, who needs that crap? We have Evolving Wilds, which is just as good, because while this deck may look aggro-ish at first sight, because, you know, we got the Land Wars, the Nest Invaders, and the Kha'Zix Predators, as you'll see, it's not really that aggro, and the tempo loss from it coming into play tapped isn't that big a deal. And we also have Colony Gardens as well, which come into play tapped, but it's worth it for the extra token. Because with the extra token, that contributes to getting your Beastmaster Ascension online earlier, or if you have a token, and then you play Kozlex Predator, that's four guys right there, you can even, then after you play the Kozlex Predator, that turn, Ancestral Recall. And then boom. Bam. You're doing good. In your face. So yeah, originally, actually, let's talk about this a little bit. This deck yeah. used to be red-green. It was a Furnace Celebration deck, yep. originally. But then I found out as I was playing it that the Furnace Celebration part of the deck really wasn't holding up its part of the bargain. I wasn't really winning most decks with Furnace Celebration. I was mostly winning with Beastmaster's Ascension and this lovely new card. Uh, not Beast Within, that's a great card too, but Fresh Meat where I just turn all of these spawn, sacrifice them to pay for fresh meat, and then get a bunch of 3-3s. That's how I was winning most of the games. Nice. So I got rid of the red and added blue to streamline it into more combo deck, with the combo being get fresh meat or Beastmaster's Ascension online as soon as possible. So blue gives me preordain to, you know, get the pieces that you need when you need them. Into the royal to bounce their stuff so you can get through with attackers, or if you can even, in a pinch, bounce your own Kozlux Predator back to your hand to get some more tokens, and Mana Leaks to stop their threats. Because, as you can see, this deck's curve stops at 4. So yes. once, and you get a ton of spawn. So, again, it looks aggro, and it has sort of a combo win condition, but it can go very controlling and toward the middle and late game. So you have all this stuff down, you're just attacking each turn, building up your Beastmaster's Ascension, getting ready to unleash a super fresh meat, and you're just you're just countering mm -hmm. whatever they put out. Yeah. So yes, and we have the Awakening Zones as well, to just give us some more tokens, slowly but surely. And Beast Within is just a catch-all answer to basically whatever our opponents throw at us that we can't deal with from within to the Royal, or we forgot to counter. Yes. Yes, and for our sideboard... We have just more of the same stuff. We have some more Beast Within's in case they have a lot of Planeswalkers or yep. something. We need to get rid of them. We have Fogs. <laughs> kind of, I don't know how long they, it's been since anyone's seen a Fog in a sideboard. Yeah, I think that that's... Fog's not a very good card, is it? Fog's usually not a very good card, but it's pretty good here because against aggro decks, it just buys us so much time because uh, they swing in with their five creatures thinking they're going in for the kill. We Fog them, attack next turn with an online Beastmaster's Ascension. Or during the end step, we fresh meat for a million and then attack for the kill. Ah, uh, I see. Yeah, it's not bad. Then we have another fresh meat in case we're playing against decks that have lots of Black Sun Zeniths or Day of Judgments. Mm -hmm. Oh, the look on their faces when they <laughs> think they, they have judgmented 700 guys and then they're suddenly facing down 700 beasts. Ooh, that's it's, rough. It's nasty. And the nice thing, uh, one more thing about fresh meat is that in this deck with all the spawn, you can usually just keep one forest untapped, and that's more than enough to have fresh meat open, because you sacrifice one, two, three, spawn, tap your one forest for fresh meat, and then you're good. So it's very easy to keep mana open for fresh meat during their turn. Nice. We have some naturalizes in here, which are basically a remnant of playing against Cobblade, which is thankfully no longer legal, yes. so we don't have to worry about that anymore. So these could probably become something else. I'm not quite sure. We'll have to see how the metagame evolves, and... Uh, We'll see what happens. Maybe if uh, Valakut becomes popular, as has been going through the grapevine lately, these could become spreading seas. Yeah. Or, you know, if Sark and the Mad Decks become <laughs> the new rage, uh, then we could uh, do some anti-dragon stuff here, perhaps. I'm not sure if that would happen, but I, I guess we'll see, right? Hey, you pulled a Sark and the Mad once in your draft, and you were pretty excited about that. Yeah, but then I have to, had to redraft it, and, and I was that, not excited about that. And that's why we don't draft there anymore. Anyway, and lastly, we have some more in summons, which are, again, come in with the fogs against aggro decks, because you just need to out-tempo them and just survive until you get to the late game, when they you lay a Beastmaster Ascension, or you just fresh meet them, and they can't deal with it. And it can also bring back your Kozlux Predator, so that you can, you know, get more spawn, get your Beastmaster Ascension online faster. So yeah, that's the deck, and it's pretty neat, as I've been discovering so far. Yeah? Yeah. So, 
I think I've talked enough. I think everyone wants to see this deck in action. So let's get to it and see what this deck can do. Let's go. 